What's good YouTube, Mario Devon here for yet another video. Okay, so I got a lot of questions, okay? I look at all in the comments, I got a lot of questions regarding the M50 photography behind the scenes video, okay? So the main questions I'm getting is what lens I'm using, what camera I'm using, but a big question I'm getting is how did I get my photos to look this way on the M50? I'm gonna tell you, the key is follow the photography rules. So since we're talking about, you know, applying the principles of photography, what we all know about it, let's go through a video. Camera basics, okay? I'm gonna give you camera basics for photography. And this will help you with your M50 or any other small mirrorless camera you have or big mirrorless camera. Doesn't matter, this applies to any camera, including an iPhone. Some of you asked about presets, no. Some of you asked about specific settings for the camera, no, we're not doing that, okay? Some of you asked, what's the special sauce that you're using? Listen, I got no witchcraft. This is no tricks. I'm gonna break down exactly how I shot these photos. Not only am I gonna break down how I shot those photos from the M50 video, we're gonna talk about how to shoot just various types of photos that I know that I encounter on a daily basis regardless of the job that I have. So these basic principles are gonna apply to, you know, regular photography that you may do for your family, landscape photography, fitness photography, okay? Uh, portrait photography, any style of photography, these, these rules are gonna apply, it's all across the board. And once you follow these rules, if you understand what you're shooting and the why, then any of you can do it. I mean, anybody that's watching this video, you can apply these principles and get some really good photos, okay? I call it the holy trinity of photography, okay? You have your aperture, you also have your shutter speed, and lastly, you have your ISO. So when you get all three of those things right, that's when you can, you know, get the shots you want exactly the way you want them based on the type of photography you're doing. So part one, let's go through aperture, okay? Aperture is also known as f-stops. In your camera, f-stops is going to be controlled by your lens, okay? That's where you see the f1.4, the f1.8, the f2.8. Or you can go pretty high, f4, f10, it doesn't matter, but that is your f-stop, that is your aperture. So aperture, what is aperture? The basic principle of aperture is just how wide open your lens is. Think about your eyes, all right? With your eyes, I want you to do this. You see it's more light that comes in if you do this. If you do this right here, you'll see, you know, everything gets darker. That is exactly what your lens is doing, actually. If you want me to be very frank with you, that's what it is. Your lens is pretty much the eyeball of your camera. I guess we could call it that. So think about it from a principle of a camera, okay? When you boost that aperture to something like F5, F6, F10, you'll notice that it gets darker. That's because your lens is actually closing, letting less light in. And now go down to an aperture like, you know, 1.4, 2.8. Either one of those, you'll see that the lens is opening wider, all right? That's, that's when your aperture is wide open, and therefore you're letting a lot more light in. The same way it is when we have our eyes wide open, we let more light in, okay, so we can see better. Now what y'all really wanna know is how do you get those creamy, buttery backgrounds, okay? Usually to get that good bokeh, that blurry background, you know, that separates your subject from everything, you wanna use a low aperture, a fast aperture. These are terms that can be interchangeable, but basically low aperture, 1.4, 1.8, 2.8, I've said these before over and over, but I'm trying to just paint the picture for you. So those low apertures create that background blur. When your aperture is higher, everything is in focus, all right? So two things happen there when your aperture is higher. Everything is in focus, but you also lose a lot of light, all right? But when your aperture is really low and wide open, then you'll let in more light, but also have that blurry background. So if you wanna get that blurry background, get a lens that is fast enough, wide enough, that you can get that aperture all the way down. It's not usually the camera that's the issue. A lot of times to get your photography to the next level, it is going to be the lens and how fast and how, how sharp that lens is. So yes, with portrait photography, you may wanna have that wide open aperture so that you, know, you can get that blurry, nice background to separate your subject. I get that, I love that. That's that's my favorite thing to do. But what if you're shooting landscape, okay? If you're shooting landscape, you may need to have a slower aperture or a, you know, a bigger aperture, which is like F10, you know, so that you can get everything in focus. Say for instance, you're in the city, you're getting a shot of the cityscape, all right? You don't want some parts of that image not to be sharp because your aperture was so low. You want everything in focus tack sharp. That means your aperture is going to be really slow or really high. So instead of something like, you know, 1.4 on your f-stop, it may be something like F6. F8, F10. So hopefully that description gives you, you know, a glimpse of what you can do with aperture. So let's apply it to very specific types of photography, okay? So when you're shooting portraits, all right, of a subject, you know, you may want to have that blurry background. You may want to have the aperture really low at like a 1.8, a 2.8. But if you're shooting landscapes, you don't want 
that. You don't want, you know, parts of your picture in focus and parts of that landscape not in focus. You want the entire thing in focus. So instead of using a low aperture, you're gonna use a higher aperture, something like F8, F10, okay? That way you can get everything in focus that everyone can see every detail in that sharp and it's tax sharp. That's when you actually, you know, those principles can change depending on, like I said, depending on what type of photography you're doing. I hope that helps, all right? So that is aperture. A lot was said, give me a moment. I need to take a drink. Much better. All right, I know aperture was a lot. Let's try to shorten it up with the shutter speed. Shutter speed is the second of the holy trinity that we're gonna talk about today. Shutter speed is pretty simple. How long is the shutter gonna stay open? It is measured in seconds, all right? I'm trying not to get too scientific because I know it can get confusing, but it's measured in seconds. So you'll see on your screen sometimes 1 50th of a second. You may see 1 25th of a second. So to make it simple, just focus on the denominator, okay? So you see the one, that's your, that's your numerator. And just talking about basic math, that none that number other there's the denominator okay if the denominator like the 125th or the 50 the 150th that 50 if it's higher then that means the camera's letting in less light so say for instance you know one four thousand of a second that's that's a really really fast shutter speed it lets in less light because this this is the shutter all right this is my hand this is the shutter okay if your shutter speed is really slow your shutter is going to stay open it's going to take a picture in that long all right that is how you get those long exposure pictures that you see on instagram i'm going to have them on the screen somewhere and you know showing you but long exposure photography the shutter speed is open enough so that you can get that trail of light all right and then boom the shutter closes but you get that picture it captures all those movements now when you want to have a faster shutter i always say fitness is the the best way to show that faster shutter or like you know wildlife photography okay because you want to get that really fast shutter you want to catch that moment quickly so say for instance i have you know athletes that are doing different things in the gym and i have them doing movements if i'm taking pictures of those movements my shutter speed is going to be pretty fast because I want to catch those moments that quickly all right I don't want to have someone doing something like a kettlebell swing in the gym and I'm capturing the up and down no I'm not doing a video you don't want it to be that way I want to capture that moment I want to you know I want I want I wanted to feel like I'm doing the robot dance all right I want my pictures just to, I want it to be like a clipbook you know I want to get all those little moments and the way you get those quick moments with shutter speed is to make sure your shutter speed is fast enough all right, that's that's shutter speed in a nutshell. Another thing that helps with shutter speed in photography is sometimes you may be shooting at high noon or you may be shooting in a really, really harsh, you know, sunlight area. If you boost that shutter speed, like I said, the shutter speed, the higher it is, the faster it is, the less light it lets in. So instead of using an ND filter like we would have to for video, if you boost your shutter speed, that's okay. Especially if you have a moving model because you're doing two things at one time. One, you're making sure from an exposure perspective perspective that you're not letting in too much light and then two if you have a moving model you can capture all of her movements or all of his movements just while they're moving around you can boom 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 you know you got more shots then you got more shots to look through but you know at least you're catching those pictures tack sharp did y'all like my robot like that job was that okay for you oh. Okay, I'm bad at this, sorry. So just to break down, you know, the styles of photography. If you're shooting weddings, you may want a fast shutter speed because you want to catch those movements of the bride and the groom and the family. You want to boom, boom, boom. You want to catch those movements where you can. If you're shooting fitness, I always recommend fast shutter speed, okay? If you're shooting in harsh sunlight if you don't have a filter of any kind. Fast shutter speed, you wanna make sure you're not letting in a lot of light, okay? Now, moments where you wanna have a really slow shutter speed, where you want that shutter to be wide open for a little bit of time, you know, a great example, again, is going to be that 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 long exposure photography you see when people have these trails of light. Car photography is another thing. If you ever wonder why, you know, you can get those shots of the car in focus, but you have that, you know, this whoosh background and everything, that's where the shutter speed comes in, okay? And I'll hopefully have like some text on the screen too to say like, oh, this is the fast shutter speed. Speed. This is a slow shutter speed. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I ain't even made it to the editing room yet. I'm still talking to you. Now let's talk about ISO. The last of the Holy Trinity, ISO. ISO is, I would say, it is the least important of the of the bunch, all right? It, it is, you know, it's, it's there and you're gonna need it. You're gonna need to control it. So I look at ISO as artificial light, okay? It's the last piece. Do not change ISO until you get to the end when you adjust your aperture and when you adjust your shutter speed. Now you can adjust your ISO, okay? That's the reason why I left it last in this video. I want you to think of aperture and shutter speed the same way you will your own 
own eyes. And the reason why I say that is because the lenses and cameras are a lot like our eyes. The light travels to the lens first, okay? That is the aperture. How much light are you gonna let in through the lens? From there, it travels from the lens into the camera body. That's where the shutter speed. How quickly is the shutter or how slow is the shutter gonna be open on the camera? Lastly, you have ISO. That is gonna be the last thing you adjust, you know, when you're actually trying to dial in your exposure. That's the reason for me, I like a camera that's really good in low light because I shoot a lot of fitness. When I'm shooting fitness, I want my shutter speed to be pretty fast. I want it to be like 1 320th, all right? That 320 is pretty fast. I want it to be 1 400th. I want to catch those moments. But I also want my aperture to be wide open because I just like a good portrait of a blurry background, okay? But what happens if my shutter speed is that fast is I lose a lot of light. And that is where ISO comes in. I get to turn up that ISO. The higher the number, the more artificial light you're letting in. If you have a crop sensor camera like the M50 we referenced in the intro of this video, you do not want to go over ISO 1000 because ISO being artificial light, it can introduce noise into your images, okay? You do not want the noise in your image. If you're shooting crop sensor, I'm giving you that advice, do not go over 1000 unless, unless you have a Sony camera. But if you're using crop sensor, Canon, Nikon, I do not recommend going over 1000 because your image may get noisy. Yes, you can clean it up in post, but I'm telling you, you don't want to even have to introduce a lot of noise into your pictures. Now, if you're shooting full frame, now the game has changed with the full frame now. I'm telling you, with my Sony a7 III and also my Canon R6, I can go as high as ISO 6400. And that is a really, really high ISO. But basically, I'm able to still get a lot of light in without introducing a lot of noise. So if you're shooting full frame, a lot of times you can kind of go over 1000. Don't go too crazy, but you can go over 1000. In photography, you absolutely can when you have full frame. But again, ISO, last thing you should adjust. If you need that ISO, go ahead and use it, boost that up, but you really wanna get it as low as you can. Because the lower your ISO, the less noise you introduce into your pictures before you even take them into the editing room. So quick summary, aperture, that is how wide your lens is, all right? If it's wide, that's how you get your blurry pictures, but it also lets in more light. If it's not wide and if it's closed, that's also how you get everything in focus, but you let in less light. But shutter speed, that is pretty much how long your camera is gonna stay open. Is it gonna last this long, be out here, boom, kameha, meha, all right, is it gonna be there? Or is it gonna just boom, boom, you know, like bow, bow, like a clap, all right? Is it gonna be really fast, snappy, okay? And lastly, ISO, simple. It is artificial light. How does that apply to my M50 photos? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how I shot the M50 photos in another video, <laughs> but just to give you a snip, okay? Uh, the aperture was always wide open the entire video. I was using the 50 millimeter 1.8, the nifty 50 on the M50. Okay, I kept it at 1.8 to get that blurry background. That's number one. Number two, my shutter speed, I actually had pretty fast because it was a really, really bright day. Okay, so we were on a rooftop in Nashville. Okay, so it was really bright. Just the sun just doing his thing, living his life, okay? So my shutter speed was actually pretty fast, which allowed me to allow Jessica, the model, to just move around and do her thing. Now ISO, I kept it low. And the reason why I kept it low, again, it was really bright, so I didn't need any artificial light. My ISO was like 100. So let me break this down. My aperture for that shoot, 1.8, so I can get that blurry background, all right? My shutter speed for that shoot, eh, it's probably about one 3,000th, okay? Because it's really sunny. My ISO for that shoot, ISO 100. I don't I don't need that, okay? Because I didn't need the artificial light. Now I'm giving you these settings to kind of, you know, a little bit tell you how I shot the photos, but these are not absolute settings. I don't want you to go and put these settings in your camera and then, oh, that's how I'm gonna shoot photos. No, you need to understand the principles of, you know, when to use what, all right? When to adjust which thing, okay? So get out there, go and shoot more, understand the principles of those three because they're gonna be your friend. Now these principles today we're talking about for photography, but these same, the same holy trinity that we're talking about today applies to video and that is going to be the next video you get out of me when it comes to camera basics this is camera basics for photography we got another one coming for videography and we're going to break that down too and another series we're going to have we're going to get to see you know we're going to see what we can do with the m50 i want to show you how to get the most out of your m50 i don't care if you're a photographer or videographer i'm going to show you we're going to have a series of m50 videos i got you okay because i, I keep getting these comments and i really want to help you as much as possible but that's all i have for today i hope that helps some of you understand you know the basics of, of photography in a sense as far as like those settings the holy trinity of photography okay but thank you so much for watching please like 
comment, subscribe to your boy, okay? Just to let your boy know you, you love what he's doing. If you don't like it, let me know too. I enjoy the feedback. I'm, you know, I like to be in the comments talking to you all, but thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, okay? And I will see you on the next video. Peace out.